welcome to physics so today in this video we are going to talk about gauss law in the presence of dielectrics so you know the conventional form of gauss law basically this is the uh, differential form of gauss law divergence of e equals to rho upon epsilon naught e is the electric field rho is the charge density and epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and from here we can just write epsilon naught into divergence of e this is equals to rho now what happens in dielectrics in dielectrics this rho volume charge density composed of two components so rho has two parts one is rho bound another one is rho free so in dielectrics two types of charges are seen one is the bound charge another is the free charge and for the bound charge we get bound charge density and the free charge we get uh, free charge density now this bound charge density uh, we have seen it is given by minus of divergence of p where this p is the polarization vector because if you have some dielectric if it is placed in electric field it will be polarized so p is the polarization polarization vector okay now let us try to uh, <coughs> replace this row by this combination of rho b and rho f so in presence of dielectric this row can be written as a sum of rho b plus rho f because two types of charges are there in uh, dielectrics okay so what it will become epsilon not into divergence of e and this rho b can be written like this minus divergence of p okay p is the polarization plus rho free so if you take this divergence common divergence of we can write epsilon not e and this will come on the left hand side and it can be written like p this is equals to rho free and this term is identified as another vector d which is known as electric displacement electric displacement so if you use the no this notation then our equation becomes divergence of d equals to rho free so this is the differential form of gauss law in the presence of dielectrics this is our required expression gauss law in the presence of dielectrics and this is the differential form differential form so we can easily write the integral form of it so if you write the integral from here then it can be written like this so i'm just writing the integral from here integral form so if you write the integral from this equation then it can be written like this integration d dot da equals to q f enclosed okay so this is the integral form of gauss law where this d is the electric displacement da is some infinitesimal area element and qf encloses the charged free charged enclosed in the gaussian surface so in gauss law you take gaussian surface so here this qf enclosed denotes the free charge enclosed inside the gaussian surface now let us solve a problem based on this so we have a problem here so i am reading the problem okay but before that let me just remove this okay now let us read the problem the problem is like this a metal sphere of radius a carry uh, carries a charge q so let us take a metal sphere so this is the metal sphere of radius a it carrying a charge q and this is a metal sphere okay don't get confused this is metal sphere next it is surrounded out to radius b by linear dielectric material of permittivity epsilon so it is extended up to let's say radius b and which is surrounded by some dielectric material like this so excuse me for my sphere it is not properly spherical but you can understand this is the dielectric material enclosed 
Uh, and the permittivity is given to you S plus epsilon. Now what we have to find out? Find the potential at the center. So we have to find the potential at the center. V at zero, let's say. So what is the basic definition of potential? Potential is basically the work required to bring a test charge from infinity to that particular point where you want to calculate the potential. So what you can do, you can bring the test charge from infinity to let's say radius b and from radius b to you can bring it to radius a then from further radius a you can bring it to the center where you want to calculate the potential. So if I write the formula then it can be written like this v of 0, v at 0. So your formula is minus infinity to that point let us say 0 the formula is e dot dl. Okay. Now we need to know the value of the electric field in different regions. Here three regions are involved. One is this from minus infinity to this B up to B, from B to A where the dielectric material is existing and from B to, uh, sorry, from A to this zero. So three integrations we will have and DL is basically DR here. So if you consider this to be R, this is R cap, this is DR, DR, R cap. Okay. So we get breaking this integration into three parts. Firstly, minus uh, sorry, uh, plus infinity to let's say we are going to B. Here, let's say that is E1 dr. Okay, r cap dot r dr r cap is E1 dr uh, minus from B to A we are getting going. Let's say that is E2 dr and let's finally here the electric field is E3 from A to 0 E3 dr. Now the question is what is the value of this electric field E1 in this region, E2 in this region and E3 in this region. Okay. What is E1? E1 if you apply the Gauss law 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square. Okay. So minus infinity to be E1 is basically the total charge enclosed here is Q given to you. So the electric field will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q upon R square dr. Simple. Next from B to A. In B to A we have dielectric. So the electric field will be B to A. Now we can apply the Gauss law differential form of uh, integrating form of Gauss law to find out the value of the electric field in the dielectric region. Let's say this is R. So if you write that we can write it like this integration of d dot dA equals to qf enclosed okay this is a formula. So we can just write d into what is the area 4 pi r square this is equals to qf enclosed. So d is basically 1 by 4 pi r square into q qf enclosed is equals to q okay. Now d equals to epsilon e. So e becomes 1 by 4 pi epsilon r square into q not epsilon not it is epsilon given to you. So we are just writing that 1 by 4 pi epsilon r square into q dr. And what about e3 you know it is a metallic sphere so and the electric field inside a metallic conductor is 0 that is why e3 is equals to 0 so we do not need to consider the third term. So if you calculate this, this will give you 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught onto 1 by r. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So q by 4 pi epsilon, q by 4 pi, uh, you can take common. Then 1 by r square minus 1 by r minus 1 by r and this minus minus plus. So 1 by epsilon naught b. And what about this? This is producing 1 by q by 4 pi we have taken uh, minus 1 by r. So it is becoming plus 1 by r so plus 1 by epsilon a minus 1 by epsilon b okay so this is the correct option and this option is matching with option a so option is the correct option so i hope you have understood how to utilize gauss law in the presence of dielectric so i have explained the theory and i have also discussed some problem related to that 
so if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel please subscribe the channel don't forget to press the bell icon and one more thing guys i am taking uh, currently taking a detailed course on electromagnetic theory on an academy so enroll for that course and if you have not taken an academy plus subscription you can take it using our referral code physics hub and an academy will give you 10 percent off on overall fees so this is all for today guys thank you very much for watching this video see you in the next video bye bye